I want to point out something right now. Somehow, I don't know how this happened, but in society right now, we have come to believe that if you agree with a person on a topic, somehow you're signaling to the rest of the world that you agree with everything that person thinks on every topic. That's simply not true. It's okay to say that something that's good is good. Now this is a cover. Okay. So it, we call it a shutter and it protects the windows from micrometeorites. Okay. The shutters are closed, the windows are protected. And also thermally insulates the windows from the radiation environment of space. So can you shut these things from the outside? No, you can open and close it from the inside. Oh, okay, wait. On the inside, you're throwing a lever or something. Yeah, you're and turning it, a knob. And it's... And it's Open. Yeah. On the outside. On the outside. How do you do that and maintain a pressure seal between them? O-ring type seals. No, you don't. With a rotating shaft. All our hatch seals are O-ring type seals. Yeah, but how... Uh, so uh, we, uh, let's go inside. We can see it. Okay. okay. Oh, you have a whole series of O-rings in here and a shaft that you rotate. So, it, I mean, like on the space station, how many of these would you have? Uh, seven, because we have seven windows. What happens if you get a leak on that? Um, then you have a leak. You just have a leak. And, and, and you, what you would do you is... You lose air. Yeah, you would probably seal the whole cupola off. And then uh, there's probably a plan, I don't know off the top of my head, but there's probably a plan for replacing <laughs> The, the mechanism might require a spacewalk. So my question is how can you operate a lid on the outside of the space station by manipulating something mechanical on the inside of the space station without losing air pressure? It's, it's called real good engineering. We started talking months ago. The International Space Station is going to transit in front of the eclipse, right? It's going to happen. This is the spot. Like, this is the exact... Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, transit. Oh, it happened! I saw it! One, transit. Oh, it happened! I saw it! I totally saw it! Transit. Oh, it happened! I saw it! I totally saw it! Dude! Did you see it? No, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. it. Did you see it? No, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. It happened. I saw it in the monitor. Did you see it? No, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. It happened. I saw it in the monitor. One transit. Oh, it happened. I saw it. This is a very rare event. Great question. All right. Thank you. Why don't we take the next question on YouTube? I'm Destin from Huntsville, Alabama. This is Sadie and Spotsy on the International Space Station. If you're free falling in one position without touching anything with no spin, is it possible to wiggle in such a way that you're able to rotate to a different angular position and then stop? On Smarter Every Day, we demonstrated this with a high-speed camera and a cat who is a non-holonomic system and can do this by extending his legs, arching his back, and twisting in a very specific pattern. So can humans do this on orbit? You want to say hey to the astronauts? Hey. <laughs> Thank you. We look up to you guys. Okay, well, that's a great question. Uh, we don't have any cats on board, but we have a medical doctor who maybe can try to demonstrate the yeah, next best thing to a cat. Here we are, it's about 2.10 in the morning, and we're about to watch the ISS cross. I've never seen the shape of the ISS, so we're about to see how real that is. Check back with you momentarily. So all in all, I felt pretty good about seeing it. I knew that the moon was going to keep moving, so I had to plan ahead a little bit, just make sure that I wasn't moving it during that minute period of time that it would be crossing. So I was kind of keeping it moved ahead of time. And then something weird happened right after I made that little video, so it was about two and a half minutes before the past this happened which I assume is a bird certainly looks like one so I thought that was interesting I just wanted to show you that that this bird here I'm gonna slow it down for you a little bit and you'll see a bird seems to fly I'm not sure what direction 
um, but seems to fly in front of the moon so that was pretty interesting caught that and then uh, got the camera steady and ready for the transit my alarm went off on my phone and I knew I had 10 seconds I counted down on my head 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 I remember waiting like what and then sure enough there it was so it was within two or three seconds of what time it was supposed to I think and here we go, we're going to watch it again, this time at 50% speed. Go ahead and see it, uh, if you don't see it, starting about 2 o'clock and ending around 8. Again, now we're watching it at 75% speed. And finally, we'll watch it at a super slow-mo 10% speed. Starting around 2 and ending around 8 o'clock. After this, I'll go ahead and zoom in so we can get a little closer look. And it was confirmed that the ISS is at least taking the shape that it's supposed to. Now again, I've shown before that this uh, could be easily faked by somebody who wanted to fake it. Uh, I have no uh, need to fake it. This is a actual video, and here we can see it as close as basically I can get, and it looks to be the shape of the ISS. Uh, does it look a little weird? Yeah. I mean, does it look like a blob? Yeah. Uh, but I have no reason to doubt that whatever is flying in the sky has the shape that the ISS is supposed to have. Now, one thing I did do, just because I wanted to kind of verify it a little bit further, is I took this particular image of the ISS or supposed ISS and the first thing I did was I uh, chroma keyed it to take out all of the black and now you see that and I, I put it in front of the moon and then I was able to reduce the size and get it down to the same size as the blob crossing spun it turned it the right way and overlaid it it certainly looks to be the correct dimensions um, of the ISS fit right over it just like that and so now the question becomes do I believe in the ISS or that the ISS is what I can see flying above my head well here's what I believe I believe that the craft that takes the pictures that can be found on the EOJ.JSC website well those pictures are taken by a craft shaped like the ISS that's what I believe but do I believe that Mark Kelly and all the astronauts are actually inside said craft? <laughs> no. No, I don't. Why? Well, let's go through the reasons why. First off, we have to remember that we're talking about NASA. Of all people, NASA. The organization that has lied to not just the country, but the world, about the greatest feat ever by mankind. They did six supposed missions with people landing on the moon all between 1969 and 1972 all during the presidency of Mr. Crook himself Richard Nixon. Now the images we're looking at now look so much like models and if you've ever looked into the models used in Star Wars and the models they used in Space Odyssey uh, 2001 uh, you'll know that these look identical to the black box models that they made for those movies uh, almost to a T. And some of these images supposedly taken from the ground, I just can't buy them. Uh, this one here supposedly taken from some telescope. This one here actually places three uh, of these solar panels on the ISS and it looks nothing like it in my opinion. Not that that means that it's fake because people are faking images, uh, but it certainly, certainly makes me doubt some things. Then I see an image like this and it looks to me to be a model. Remember that the size that we're looking at is supposedly the length of a football field. Um, and this looks like a tiny little model in a little black box. Again, that's just my opinion. But let us continue with more reasons why I would never trust liars. I think Eddie Bravo said it best when he said, I'd rather be thought of as an idiot and a moron for not trusting known liars and crooks and thieves rather than to be a traitor for backing them. And that's exactly how I feel when you watch film like this, which looks terrible. Uh, and, and all the space agencies. This is from Japan, uh, supposedly some lander that was going to the moon. And if you believe this, then you're just simply um, not 
capable of looking at evidence and, and reaching a, a conclusion because this is fabricated completely 100% that's not the moon uh, and this craft is not flying there so you can believe it if you want uh, but if you are you are simply believing it because men tell you to and that's not a safe way to go about your business especially when money is being dumped into the laps of people who just mentioned the idea of space this is something that was interesting and just kind of adding to the preponderance of evidence uh, back in 2015 I remember showing you this article saying that the HD live stream of Earth will now be available 24 7 which I said what there's no 24 7 view of the Earth why are they saying that and right below in the article it says well there is a 24 7 view uh, of the Earth however it goes offline for 40 minutes every 90 minutes so it's like wait a second there's a 24 7 video feed that goes offline for 40 minutes every 90 minutes doesn't seem to make a lot of sense I'm not sure that's 24 7 uh, but clearly they wrote an article about it that it's now available 24 7 so they're willing to make these kind of nonsense lies and even right in front of you and when I make a video saying that the ISS is not 24 7 all I get in the comment section is people dropping a link to a YouTube channel that says live feed from the ISS but it's simply a 10 minute clip played in loop over and over and over again and people think that's proof of 24 7 shows you how much they pay attention and in case you didn't know, I'm starting my own store, so come on by. It's called the uh, Fake Space. Uh, we're open 24-7, so anytime you want to come on in, we're here. Um, yeah, 24-7, except for every 90 minutes, we do close for 40 minutes. So anytime, 24-7, we're always there for you, except for every 90 minutes, we close for 40 minutes. So I'm sure nobody will come in and complain about that sign on my window at all. I'm being very honest when I say 24-7. Do keep your eyes open, however, for the occasional blue screen special. Yes, that's in one breath we say that satellites exist, while in the very next we say that we lose contact with the $150 billion orbiting space station because it's on the other side of the globe. Also, we have a special that you can uh, give us a call, and when you do, we'll just answer the phone, and then we pretend like it's a 10-second delay. So you'll say, hello, is this fake space? And I'll say... Yes, it is. How can I help you? You do get space weather, don't you, Tim? Well, that's a very good question. Yeah, we do get space weather. And we need to remember that they're only 250 miles up. It's not like they are some astronomical distance away. And yet, we have to pretend that there's this 10-second delay. Even worse, this next issue here, let me lay it out for you. You've got Tim Peake on the ISS ready to do a live interview with this studio audience and you've got this girl with a hoop and a ball and she supposedly sent this experiment for Tim to do while on the ISS. Well Tim did it on the ISS, he did it in front of a blue checkered screen and refused to do it live. Now Tim you've also been doing some demonstrations for science students and one of those science students is Emily. Now you've got some some kit there that you actually designed for Tim really to just show how difficult it is to demonstrate uh, physics here on earth and it's a track and a ball just to, just shows what what actually happens there and gravity is really just pulling that ball back down. Now, uh, Tim has actually done the same experiment. Uh, you weren't able to do it live, but uh, you weren't able to do it live, but uh, you weren't able to do it live, but uh, you weren't able to do it live, but uh, you weren't able to do it live, but, uh, to do it live but we don't seem to have a video, unfortunately, but the ball can, the, the, the ball does continue all the way around. Quite, just explain, Tim, what's happening. I'd rather Tim explain why he couldn't do it live. Was it that hard to bring out the little hoop and ball? Or is it because the blue checkered backdrop allows them to basically CGI that apparatus into his hand? And that's why he's standing so still. Yes, well, it's, again, it's one of the phenomena of microgravity. It's a wonderful environment to demonstrate some of those basic scientific principles. That is true. It's such a wonderful environment to uh, demonstrate some of those basic principles of physics. However, not live. Uh, it's been way too difficult to bring out the entire hoop and the entire ball to do right there on the screen for everybody. Uh, even if he was filming it for some sort of educational video earlier in the day, there's no reason why you wouldn't have the device and the ball live for the studio audience. It's ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, these are actual videos of CubeSat launches. Not this right here, this is a little model. But all these launches are actual video. 
And if that's not reason enough to question the ISS, I don't know what else you need. But luckily, I got tons more. Yeah, but these bunches of launches of these CubeSats are hilarious. What a joke. And on top of that, we have no secondary confirmation of the existence of anything about space. It's all NASA or another government agency. You can't count on SpaceX anymore as a private industry, as this video proves. Under our EOV certification agreement, we're undertaking uh, vigorous engineering reviews with the Air Force. To date, we've delivered more than 30,000 data items to the Air Force and provided total access to our internal systems to more than 300 government officials for certification. And we hope to complete uh, that certification this year. You gave the United States government 300 members of that government full access to your internal systems? Yee. There goes the uh, whole private space company thing. Plus, we have no reason to believe astronauts. They all sound so ridiculous. They can't even say what experiments they're doing. They seem like they're just brain dead. None of them sound intelligent to me, again, my opinion. But when somebody asks you, uh, as an astronaut, what you should do in case of an emergency, I'm assuming that's a lot, big part of your training, is what to do on the ISS if there's some sort of a leak. Let's hear uh, Don Pettit's answer when he's questioned about a possible leak in the system. Hey, so can you shut these things from the outside? No, you can open and close it from the inside. Oh, okay, wait. On the inside, you're throwing a lever or something. Yeah, you're turning a knob. And it's... And it's Open. Yeah. On the outside. On the outside. How do you do that and maintain a pressure seal between them? O-ring type seals. No, you don't. With a rotating check. All our hatch seals are O-ring type seals. Yeah, but how... Uh, uh, my, uh, my brain's up here. Let's go inside. We can see it. Open windows. What happens if you get a leak on that? Um, then you have a leak. Okay, let's get scientific. Uh, uh, my, uh, my brain's. Um, then you have a leak. You just have a leak. And what you would do is this air. Yeah, you would probably seal the whole thing off. And then. There's probably a plan, I don't know off the top of my head, but there's probably a plan for replacing the, the mechanism might require a spacewalk. By manipulating something mechanical on the inside of the space station without losing air pressure. It's, it's called real good engineering. Okay. Now in this next quote, you can either think for yourself or you can allow others to think for you. What is the possible reason this man would say this in regards to the moon? and the technology around it. Somebody, please explain it to me. It's the most ridiculous nonsense claim ever made in the court of law if we were looking for evidence and this is what was said, they'd be found guilty in a heartbeat. Somebody needs to explain why space travel is the only industry in the history of the world, the only technological advance ever that has regressed for 60 years has gone so far backwards, less than one-tenth of one percent of the distance is what we're talking here. How could that be possible? How do people believe this? I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. Oh yeah, I'm real sure that something that never existed and doesn't even exist today because it's not possible it might be hard to build that back again I could see that I mean just like the printing press just like the steam engine the cellular phone I mean if we destroy that technology it would be a painful process to build it back again or wait no it wouldn't it doesn't make any sense at all in any court of law NASA is guilty of lying to humanity our greatest feat ever never happened I mean, here's the flight director of Apollo, Gene Krantz. I mean, will he do well on the witness stand? How would he explain 700 boxes of missing telemetry and video data? It was all recorded on these telemetry tapes. So where is this hard evidence? I haven't uh, seen anything that indicates the telemetry data is even in existence. And as I said, even if we had it, we don't have the machines to play it back. But your, you, your own research has shown the telemetry data is missing. That's, that's right. Could this be true? Mankind's first interplanetary exploration and the original science data is missing? Apollo 11, this is Houston. Radio check, over. 
If it's anywhere, it should be here at NASA's Goddard Space Center in Maryland, home to the National Space Science Data Archives. This film you're making now, what is it? Uh, does it have a name? I mean, do you have you have a name for it yet, I think or are you? Call it Did we go? Did we go? Okay, okay. Doesn't have it either. The Smithsonian right. doesn't have it. Right. Johnson doesn't right. have it. Right. 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 We we've been unable to 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 track it down. I mean, we don't know uh, where this this telemetry data ended up, and we don't know the what what path it may have taken. So. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm afraid I can't really give you much of a clue as to as to where this data ended up and whether it, it still exists or not. Okay, so uh, we didn't go to the moon, but what does that have to do with the ISS? Well, first, tell me what astronaut I should believe. The easy question is going to be, do we see stars in space? Now, in space, there's only two different sides of the Earth you can be on. You can be on the night side of Earth, or you can be on the day side of Earth. So it's a pretty easy question. Do we see stars in space? Have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, because yeah, you time. can see, yeah, because yeah. you can see the stars. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. Yeah. It's, it's not a black cool void. Thing. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. Yeah, you can, and there's more than stars. You can see planets. You can right. see moons. You, you see the ga the gas uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky yeah, you Way see galaxy. Yeah, Magellanic clouds. Magellanic. See, I was yeah. I just wanted and the Magellan clouds. Well, there's a large clouds. one I didn't and a small one, right? Yeah. And and then you can see uh, the zodiacal light. Whoa. Uh, those those are amazing. Right before the lights sunlight. of the zodiac. The lights of the zodiac. The z zodiacal Whoa. lights. Okay. When you looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the solar corona what, uh, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. Mr. Armstrong. I do realize that when you were on the moon, you had very little time for gazing upwards. But could you tell us something about what the sky actually looks like from the moon, the sun, the earth, the stars, if any, and so on? The sky is uh, a deep black uh, when viewed from the moon, as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the earth and the moon. The uh, the Earth is the only visible object other than the Sun that can be seen, although there have been some reports of seeing planets. I myself did not see planets from the surface, but I suspect they might uh, be visible. You don't see stars in the daytime on Earth, not because they're not there, but because the atmosphere is aglow with scattered light from the Sun. If you take away the atmosphere, the Sun will still be there, but the sky goes dark. That's what the folks get when they go to the edge of the atmosphere, and they're calling that the edge of space. But when you get to the edge of the atmosphere, the atmosphere is no longer between you and the rest of the universe. And the stars reveal themselves just as they would at night. Yeah, you know, actually on my very first mission, we went up and, and when, you're, when you're in space and you're looking into deep space and you're on the sun side of the orbit, uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight so you can't see any stars just like here on Earth. But then when you look out into deep space away from the sun, it's the darkest black you can imagine. Because you can see the stars. Oh yeah. It, yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. Yeah. The cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. And when you're when you're in space and you're looking into deep space and you're on the sun side of the orbit, uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight, so you can't see any stars just like here on Earth. The they're brighter, but they're different. And a lot of things different about it. one. You don't have the atmospheric distortion, so they don't twinkle right. So you see lots of points. And you see lots of points, and that literally millions of them. And uh, I live in Colorado, and you get up on a clear night in Colorado, up in the mountains where there's no light, and you can see all these stars. Well, multiply that by a thousand. And we could not see stars. The sky, of course, was uh, was black, but it uh, had sort of a velvet sheen to it. The biggest visual surprise was just how black the sky was. <laughs> You have a brilliant sun, brighter than any sun you normally would see even here in New Mexico. Uh, you have uh, these, uh, these extraordinarily high mountains. We were in a valley deeper than the Grand Canyon. But then you have this 
black sky, a sky blacker than black, as the old Vid Vidicon expression used to be. Just the inherent beauty of it, the velvet, bottomless bucket of the universe. In like, just hanging there in a vast sea of darkness, in the most frightening darkness that you could ever imagine. I've often tried to explain the difference between darkness, when you turn out the lights and it's dark in here, or blackness. Blackness is the endlessness of it all. It's hard to comprehend. I was just a systems engineer on a well-functioning spacecraft coming home. And so, sure, I had work to do, but not nearly as pressing as before. <clears throat> and we were oriented such that we were rotating to keep thermal balance on the spacecraft and oriented in such a way that every two minutes, the Earth, the Moon, the Sun, and a 360-degree panorama of the heavens appeared in the cabin window. <clears throat> and that, that was awesome. It was an overwhelming experience. And we have to realize that in space, without the intervening atmosphere, <clears throat> the heavens are 10 times as bright, stars 10 times as numerous, uh, because there's no uh, atmosphere to block, block the light. The sky is uh, a deep black uh, when viewed from the moon as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the earth and the moon. The, uh, the earth is the only visible object other than the sun that can be seen. I mean, so yes, the shape may be confirmed. Uh, but I simply can't believe what NASA tells me. I don't believe that astronauts get into a rocket and launch to the ISS. I don't think it happens. I don't even think any country is so dumb, so stupid, to have four vehicles that can easily get them to space and dock with the ISS, and then they choose to shut them all down and do that all so that they can then spend $86 million a seat to ride on the Russian Soyuz. That's a joke. I see lots of high altitude photos, I see a ton of high altitude photos, but that can all be automated and needs no human operators, in fact the images show us that there is no human operators. I see no experiments getting done at all on the ISS that have impacted or benefited humanity in the least bit. I see 18 years of wasted money with 18 years of a craft in orbit providing zero. I see idiots for astronauts. They're not intelligent, they don't seem like scientists to me. They seem like they're ex-military fighter pilots who have all taken an oath and who can't even describe an experiment that they're doing on the ISS even though they're up there for six months straight. I've never seen the ISS cleaned. I can't imagine what it must be like inside. A submarine takes dozens of people just to keep it going, just to keep it maintained. The ISS at times has three and it's the size of a football field. I've seen the reflection of the ISS from the ground and yet come inside and looked at the replay of the camera view and there's no bright reflection, it's just a dim yellow light. How am I able to see that from the ground? I've seen and filmed the ISS from the ground when the sky was 100% clear and then gone inside to watch the replay and saw the ISS fly over me with a fully cloud covered sky. Personally, I think spacewalks are a complete and total joke. There's no reason you would ever send people out of the space station and risk their lives to drill in some box. You would never design it that way. It is the worst engineered design of all time. It's simply to show you that they're doing spacewalks, to show you the Earth. It's absolutely a show. The ISS design is a joke. Sometime go look at it, look at all the plugs and cables and cords and everything that would be on the outside, and then think about how many micrometeoroids are supposed to hit the Earth every year and just imagine that the space station just flies around and never gets hit by a thing. The idea of spacesuits is a complete and total joke. Look into the cost of a spacesuit. For what? To go out and drill in a box. It's not needed. The scuba divers and the mock ISS and the gigantic pool at the Neutral Buoyancy Lab are even more of a joke. Why in the world would you spend that much money on something that doesn't even closely emulate space? In the pool, you have scuba divers that have to go around with you the entire time and make sure your cords aren't getting caught and make sure everything that you're doing, you have all the tools you need. When you get up in space, there's no scuba divers there. 
So why would you train them constantly every time with scuba divers? There's never even a period of time where they train without scuba divers. It makes no sense. Think of all the training. Think of all the money that's spent on employing all the pieces of that for what? So that somebody can go out and screw in a multiplexer demultiplexer. I mean, the ISS has never provided 24-7 video footage ever in 18 years of being in orbit. They've lied about it numerous times. Earlier, we found out that they shut down for 40 minutes every 90 minutes, but yet call that a 24-7 feed? Well, they have to shut down because, of course, they're on the dark side of Earth. It makes no sense. Isn't there such thing as satellites? I emailed NASA and asked them why they can't leave the cameras on 24-7, and I was told because there are places on the Earth where there is no connectivity. Well, that's a blatant lie, because during the day, they have connectivity at every spot in their orbit. It's only when they turn it off at night, as if they don't have satellites. They must be incompetent because they don't know how to set a camera to the proper settings so that we can see at night. They simply have the camera go black, and then everyone's excuse is, well, you don't understand the settings of cameras. The, ca the camera isn't set to show the night. Well, why not? How hard would it be to turn the camera away from the Earth and show us the starry sky there's actually star cameras, cameras that show night vision. Imagine how awesome that would look from the ISS. You don't think we at least deserve that for $52 million a day? They'll never do it. And you watch, they'll never do it. Again, space travel is the only technological advance in the history of the world to regress. It's gone backwards for the past 50 years, and they don't even pretend like they're even close. The constant use of fisheye lenses from anywhere of altitude is another example of something very wrong. I mean, the list could go on and on, but ultimately, if someone who lied to you over and over and over said, hey, go outside at 6 p.m. and you'll see my car drive by. Okay, great. So I went out at 6 p.m. and NASA's car drove by. Who was in it? What were they doing? Who knows? I don't trust liars.